Good afternoon, Thomas. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for um, doing a Tuesday Tea with us. So uh, first I want to introduce you, but then I have a bunch of questions. Um, you, so you're an Emdria approved consultant and a trainer. Yes. Um, you provide consultation towards basic trainings for people who do their trainings with the Institute for Creative Mindfulness, and you also provide um, a consultation towards certification for people who have completed trainings in different places. Uh, you work with complex trauma, you do uh, some agency work, and you have two resources that I recommend to all of my consultees. One is a blog called Go With That. And the other one is the EMDR podcast, which I kind of listen to all the time. So we're friends in my head. Uh, <laughs> um, and I just uh, wanted to start by saying, um, while people uh, can reach you and you provide a variety of services for them, you've also been doing some pretty interesting and important humanitarian uh, work in the last couple of weeks. That I wanted to highlight um, and just um, really amplify the importance that that has had for people who are currently experiencing some difficult times. So are you okay just kind of sharing with us what that has looked like for you, why you're doing that, and, um, mm -hmm. and how people can get involved? Yes. So I've been doing, um, for about two and a half years, I have been doing trainings in a version of Flash that I developed for, for really complex trauma. And um, I've kind of adjusted those trainings at the invitation of, um, of Mara, who's the head of Touchstone Institute, and also Dr. Layla, who's another facilitate another um, faculty at um, Institute for Creative Mindfulness, who um, both are connected with different communities um, related to the to the um, current dispute in the Middle East. So I've done um, very short notice <laughs> flash trainings for um, for therapists who are working with uh, the communities that may be involved um, in the crisis in the Middle East. Then. And I also did a training with um, with Rotom Brer at um, EMDR Learning Community um, last, I believe it was last Sunday evening for for therapists in his community that wanted to um, assist. So it's been it's there have been a lot of trainings <laughs> I've done. I think four flash trainings in the last um, seven or eight days, and I'm I'm super happy to do them. Um, they were a really rewarding, uh, rewarding experience and um, needed because uh, I think in periods of crisis and in periods of really big transition, um, flash approaches can be very, very helpful when other approaches may be, um, may require a little bit more stabilization or a little bit more um, security or safety, even safety. Yeah. So but I, it is... I... It, Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I just want to say first, I think that all of these communities are really grateful for mm -hmm. your time, for your efforts, and really for this approach. So I want to know more about what the four blinks mm -hmm. provides for therapists, because you don't necessarily have to be an EMDR therapist to Correct. provide the four blinks. So can you talk about that? Yes. And this, so this started and me even starting to do trainings um, in a psychotherapy that has a living developer. So Flash was developed by an EMDR therapist named Phil Manfield. Um, and, and people can get trained with him if they would like to. However, um, what I'm doing is I've developed a very specific version of Flash that tends to work very, very well with clients with complex trauma. It's rooted in a very specific conceptualization um, about how humans heal. So it has a very, very tight understanding of how, how healing is working in this approach. So things that may not be relevant to that are taken out and things that are very relevant to that have been strengthened. 
However, it is still a version of flash in the sense that we are glancing at a memory very, very quickly Mm -hmm. and reprocessing is done in a positive scene or a positive, you know, what Phil Manfield calls a positive affective state. And that is incredibly helpful for people who um, don't have the window of tolerance right now to sit with and tolerate distress. So what's really amazing about Flash is that it allows us to process trauma, including really big trauma, with very, very minimal distress, with with potentially a pretty small window of tolerance. And while doing any type of trauma work is potentially um, risky because we are working with real stuff, um, Flash as a technique broadly isn't likely Um, to induce any, uh, it's not associated with a major risk of decompensation. Mm -hmm. And because it's built with certain resources in place, and all of this work is done inside um, a, a kind of safety container of being in this calm scene and pushing all of the stress out of awareness, we are not in these approaches going forward if the client is having distress. So it can be, once you get used to these approaches and how very different they are, it can become very clear when these approaches aren't working and we stop (laughs) and stopping. If you're having difficulty in flash, we're always just stopping and dealing with that difficulty and not going forward. Even if that difficulty is within your window of tolerance. So Mm. it's, a therapy designed to work while you're feeling good. (laughs) So the ability to to almost separate the distress from the trauma, the distress from the content, um, takes a little bit of getting used to. It takes a little bit of training and it takes a little bit of practice because many people may hear this and it it will sound like we're trying to separate the wet from water (laughs) there. It's, Mm -hmm. but you can do it. And I see people do it all the time with a really good, really good results. So. So I feel like I can um, just kind of share that um, a couple of years ago, I was in a place that was, uh, there was like a medical situation and one of our colleagues would call me about every two days to do flash with me. And it worked amazingly. And I'm so I'm so grateful for the four blinks approach um, mm-hmm. and the fact that she was able to implement that with me. And it has really um, just kind of shifted my mindset on like, oh, this is a tool that we can use and it can be standalone. Yeah. You can be EMDR trained, you can not be EMDR trained. But what it's providing is this kind of immediate relief yeah. for people who are appropriately resourced. So, um, h- how do how do uh, clinicians learn more about this? Do they just yeah. listen to the podcast? Do they do training with you? What does that look like? There are um, so many ways to do the training. The training is online in five different places. <laughs> so um, including as a playlist on YouTube, I don't know if there's show notes to this, we can distribute that information. Um, oh, we'll definitely add that. Sure. So there are um, on the four blinks, F-O-U-R-B-L-I-N-K-S website. You can always just take the training there. It's an on-demand training. On that site, there are links to the live trainings I do. I do at least two Um, trainings a month. They're three-hour trainings in which you'll get to learn a lot of what you need to learn in order to do this well. You'll also get to practice it. So there's really, um, there's really not, um, and I, I spread them around the calendar so that people on the other side of the world have a pretty good chance of, of going to So there are, I believe, five more trainings before the end of this year. And and I train agencies too. So it's not unusual for an agency to contact me and say, can we train our staff? And I'll I'll absolutely do that, um, sometimes with just a week or two notice. So there's, there's really, if you want to get flash trained, 
um, you can do that today in, in this mm. version of Flash, or at least start it. Um, the Four Blinks website has an enormous amount of resources on how to do this well. Their podcast about working mechanism, their, uh, the, the training is really comprehensive. It's, a, it's an on-demand training, and it's probably a better training than the trainings that I give live because you can always <laughs> edit video and you can always say, wait a minute, I cover this here. And so, um, so yeah, it's, it's easy to get trained. Um, That's amazing. And I'm also mm -hmm. wondering, I feel like there's a difference between flash for an individual versus flash for a group. So I've been hearing that some yeah. things might be coming up for groups. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Right. So let me, first, I want to take a step back and talk a little bit about ways that you might be able to use flash, including yeah. you know, with, with clients. So Absolutely. first, and, and one of the big things that I wanted to emphasize in the trainings that I was doing um, for therapists who are in war zones or working with people in war zones mm -hmm is that you have to make you have to be you have to be healthy <laughs> you have mm. to take care of yourself and um one of the things i love about flash that is different than some other transformational tra trauma therapies is that this is a way to heal that works self-administered mm. you can do flash on your own and if you're doing what you're being guided to do it is very likely to resolve whatever you've targeted targeted it at. If if what you've targeted is a particular individual memory, it's really likely to resolve it. So self-administered flash is highly highly effective. So this and the way I think about it is, I don't really want to make the four blinks version of flash the um, center of what I'm talking about. What I really wanna talk about is that inside you, there are ways that we can heal that are very fast, very effective, and deeply transformational. That's what I want the focus to be. The Four Blinks version of Flash is one version of being able to do that well. Mm. So part of my hope in doing this is that I'm gonna train somebody and then they're going to discover a way to do this that is going to let this go global. <laughs> they're going to find a way to do this and package it and, and hopefully, you know, make it accessible, right? And, and th they're likely to find a way to do this that hopefully is going to let us, like, rescue ourselves <laughs> as, as a species. So um, I'm working really hard right now to train as many people as I can to show people how to do this with clients, to show people how to do this in groups, to show people how to do this with themselves mm -hmm. in the hopes that someone is going to find something in this that resonates deeply and they're going to take this where I can't or where I am i don't have the you know ability or skills or resources to. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to um, retire <laughs> from this. <laughs> from this flash journey that I've been on, because while I love it, um, I'm just pointing to something that's already inside you, right? I'm just pointing to something that is right there. We're just culturally conditioned not to see healing in this way. Right. Wow, that's, that's powerful. <laughs> It's exciting stuff. And people ask, why are you, you know, Tom, why are you working so hard? And I'm like, well, if you see this, why are you not, <laughs> why are you not working this hard? If this is a way that humans can heal reliably, predictably, consistently with a very little distress, if that were a pill, it would be bigger than opiate. So why are we not all, you know, doing this? So, um, I, yeah, I want to do this until, until someone can can come along and and take it to the next uh, to the next places that it needs to go, I I love that. Um, mm -hmm. And and so, what would it look like for you to? How long does uh, the Four Blinks version of Flash take? What does that look like with an individual? Um, mm -hmm. And what what might that look like for? 
people who might be thinking about like, can I do this in a group if there's like a population? Yeah. When would that be appropriate versus not appropriate? Right. So there are already um, flash, you know, flash group protocols out there. I'm developing one for the Four Blinks version of Flash mm -hmm. that um, should be able to release by the end of, you know, by the end of this month. Because um, we wow. did four demos with um, with therapists just to kind of practice um, these approaches. Um, I'm hoping that the the protocol for groups will be able to release soon. Hmm. Here's the difficulty and, and the challenge in, in developing this. Um, first, we, part of the reason in developing a group protocol is out of the realization that humans used to heal together, right? Healing used to be, it had to have once been. Um, trauma had to have been a problem of the community and we, almost certainly once healed as, as a community. So part of what I was interested in is how do we do that? How do we do kind of parallel processes in a group? And what, what the challenge is, and this is what, you know, I think kind of what was in your question, is that if we have a certain amount of time reserved to do this, mm -hmm. some people will finish really quickly. So, I mean, you can't do flash completely synchronously some people are going to resolve whatever they target in you know 14 minutes and some may take 35 minutes mm -hmm. so what do you do with the people who who have resolved the memory quickly what do you do with the people who are struggling and how do we make sure that they get the information and assistance that they need so those are the things that we're figuring out but um, I intend to do a lot of flash groups with this protocol and keep refining it because it's, um, it lends itself well, I think, to the group format because trauma work in group context can be very, very intense, can be very volatile. But in flash, it can be very pleasant. It can be, mm. it can be a pleasant stroll. Um, Toward, toward memory resolution. So, um, yeah, so yeah I'm really, excited about, I'm excited about groups, but, but everybody's I, doing group processes and they're doing individual processes at the same time. I, I so appreciate that, that cultural lens, right? Because there are, there are different, um, experiences that might be happening where people are, um, finding it helpful yeah. to heal in a group. So thank you for that. Absolutely. And one of the things I'm really looking forward to, we haven't set a date yet, but, um, but, but David Archer is, um, we've been talking about this for a while and I can't wait. I want David to come because the group David came to just completely blew my mind with his oh. insight and awareness. So David has ways of doing flash that involve, you know, um, bringing in some cultural elements that, wow. that sound really, really, really fascinating. So I'd love to see how um, David does group yeah. flash as well. So I'll put, put that out there when it's, when, when we can come to a, um, when we can come to a time to, to, that to do those groups. Amazing. It is, yeah. it's, it's, I can't tell you how much his contributions added to, that group dynamic. It was, a, it was oh. a really lovely experience. So I love David. I'll, yes. I'll make sure to tag him in this post. I, mm. I, I will ask you a question that is kind of separate from the flash itself. Yeah. So we have had a little bit of this conversation, but just for our audience, yeah. there are people who, when they hear four blinks, they're saying, wait, how accessible is that for people who have potentially limited vision situations. Mm -hmm. And can you just kind of share with our audience what that can look like for them? Right. So um, first, Four Blinks is people will often say, why did you name it Four Blinks if we're only <laughs> blinking once or a few times? And I'll say, well, you have to name something something. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and I wanted there to be a number in it. And you can blink once or two or three or four times. It doesn't really matter how many times you blink. Now, this is the important part. What the blinks are doing in Flash is they're splitting your 30-second exposure uh, in, in your calm scene 
into multiple five second exposures to your calm scene. And if that's what we're doing, if that's what the active ingredient is, you don't need to blink. You simply need to direct your attention away from whatever your calm scene is for just a fraction of a second and then bring it back. So one of the things that you can do for people that may struggle, um, people that may struggle blinking, is you can put a post-it on the wall and simply, if you're watching a calm scene video, you can simply turn, look at that item, you know, that post-it on the wall and then turn back to your video. You don't have to blink. As a matter of fact, you don't have to use your eyes at all. If you're imagining a calm scene, all you need to do is engage in any kind of motor movement that disrupts your concentration on that calm scene. You can clap, you can tap your legs, you can very quickly do a math problem in your mind. You can wow. do, you know, two, you know, two minus one, you know, two minus one is one, and then go right back into your calm scene. Any kind of thing that breaks your concentration on your calm scene and requires you to go back in is going to give you another disconfirming, disconfirming, disconfirming experience in the calm scene. So while I'm still while I'm still calling this a version of Flash, this version of Flash, you can do it. You do it without bilateral stimulation at all, which um, is common in many forms of, of Flash. You do it without taking the suds or the you know, subjective units of disturbance or distress at all in this version of Flash. And yes, you can do Flash without blinking. <laughs> you, if you understand what's going on, um, we can make sure that we're strengthening what's going on and we can take out things that are, you know, just maybe um, extraneous variables. That is amazing. And I feel like that, that makes the four blinks so much more accessible right. for, for people. Um, that's amazing. So what would you like a mm -hmm. uh, therapist, whether they're EMDR therapist or they're uh, non-EMDR trained therapists, um, to know about how to implement this, how to learn about it and how to implement it with their clients. Okay. So one of the things I would suggest is where, as a therapist, where are you stuck now, right? Where are the difficulties that you may have right now? Because if you, um, if you're, so let me back up a tiny bit and I want to define what you and I see all the time when we work with clients. We see people, we work in, in EMDR, we work in a transformational trauma therapy. And what a transformational trauma therapy means, the way I'm defining it, is that there is a very good chance that whatever we target is going to resolve in a session or two, hmm. right? So we don't have to spend six months, while this may happen, rarely, yeah. um, for the most part, whatever we're helping clients target is resolving relatively quickly. The particular individual memories are resolving in a, in a session or two, or at least there's a very high likelihood that they will. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm defining as a transformational trauma therapy. So first, if you're not seeing that, if you don't have a transformational trauma therapy, um, then you need one, right? If you're, if you're not EMDR trained or not IFS trained or not somatic experiencing trained or not brain spotting trained, if you're not trained in one of these things where you see with your own eyes healing up close, you need to see that. And flash is something that you can learn in as little as three hours and with a script that is 19 pages. So um, if that's where you are, then I'd highly recommend you um, learn some transformational trauma therapy, and it could be flash. Now, if you are, for instance, you have maybe parts work and you have EMDR here, then you have some amazing skills. However, if you're working with someone and you meet them today, this, you know, if you meet them today, one of the things I know that if they're not in their bodies at all, and they have absolutely no resources, you're going to be lucky to be able to do EMDR with them by March or April of next year, mm -hmm. right? And right now it, it's October. So that's if you're working really well and effectively. Well, but you know what that is? 
that is a great opportunity for Flash to come in, start working on the things that are really knocking the client out of their window of tolerance right now. And now you have a healthier client to resource for EMDR therapy. And you're sending them home with a skill because believe it or not, most of my clients know how to do flash and do it mm. between sessions on what is what is seeping or whatever it is family members or others have done to bump them out of their window of tolerance. So if this is a way that humans can heal, not only do we need to be doing this clinically, we need to be showing humans how to do this, period. So it mm. makes no sense to me, absolutely no sense to me to say, this is a way that humans can heal reliably, predictably, easily. And then say the only people I'm going to train how to do this are people that already have a transformational trauma therapy in their toolkit. That makes no sense. I think we need to be training where appropriate case managers to do this. Mm. We need to be training, you know, psychiatric assistants in hospitals how to do mm. this. We need to be training, um, you know, I would say pastoral counselors how to do this. We need to be training anyone who works with people in the human services capacity how to do this well. And long story short, we all need to be doing this. We need to be doing this as humans because trauma is the biggest, longest public health crisis of our species. And I so appreciate you saying that and bringing that into this space because for someone to be a, a therapist, right? LCSW, L, uh, uh, LPC, it takes a lot of money and barriers, yeah. right? So, so for you to say, hey, we can make this accessible is actually like this amazing, right. mind blowing. Space. Yes. And here's my take. And it may be a tiny bit controversial, right? So, and I say this as an EMDR therapist, I say this as someone who identifies more as an EMDR therapist than as a flash therapist. Mm. Okay. But if I had one thing to give to therapists globally, it wouldn't be EMDR. Be right. Flash. And the reason why, the reason why is it is a very difficult task. Not, it, not just any therapist can do EMDR well with a client with complex trauma. A, I don't like the pejorative word, but a mediocre therapist can do flash in a mediocre way with a pervasively traumatized client, and it's likely to be helpful. Does that make sense? So, so EMDR with the most complex clients we work with is helpful. It's transformational, requires a long phase two to get there, but it is an 8.5 out of 10 difficult task. It just is, right? Flash is much, much simpler. Now EMDR is a deeper cleaning and we need to, because the first thing when I say that is people say, well, why do I need to be trained in EMDR? Well, we're preparing the client for life. We're preparing the client to unburden and they need a window of tolerance. They need distress tolerance. They need to get the insight that can come from other transformational trauma therapies. But sometimes people just need to heal. Sometimes people just need to resolve whatever visual or sensory thing is battering them right now. And, and Flash lets you do that. It lets you do that well. And I'm really, really, um, I don't have any like tolerance anymore mm -hmm. for people who say that Flash is like this, almost like this little redheaded step cousin to some other therapy. <laughs> it's really not. It's a way that we can heal. Yes, it's probably not as broad of a healing and it may not generalize as much as EMDR is. But what else are you going to do? with a client that isn't prepared right now to do EMDR therapy. So it's, it's a gift, right? And what is amazing is that it's not, what the gift is, is it's not flash. Flash is not the gift. The gift is that our nervous systems have known how to heal forever. Mm -hmm. 
Our nervous systems have known how to heal forever. We've gotten out of touch with that. And then cultures have show, have like convinced us that there are other ways that we heal. And every single one of those strategies doesn't work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? So um, EMDR is, quote, weird. Flash is, quote, weird. Somatic experience is, quote, <laughs> weird. But in each of those cases, there are cultures that wound us that get to determine what, what's weird and what makes sense in the cultures in which we find ourselves and the cultures in which we may have been raised. What gets normalized is the stuff that doesn't work, mm. right? So we have stuff that does work amazingly well. We need to be doing that. So I'll train, I'll train pretty much anybody how to do this, right? I I love that. And I also want to recognize that, you know, when I think about the four blinks, I think about it buying time. If somebody would not otherwise be here on earth because yeah. they cannot deal with the overwhelming uh, right. waves of, of trauma, of experiencing. Yeah. Let's absolutely do four blinks. Absolutely. I mean, okay. So you and I are EMDR therapists. And again, if we wanted to do a training on resources, we could do it tag team forever. We could do it a whole month, round the clock, never cover the same resource twice. We really do live in a resource rich world, right? Now that doesn't mean resources are easy, but we live in a resource rich world. We don't have many transformational trauma therapies. And to have one, to have, you know, to have one that simply works, that other when other therapies aren't working, you're right. So the metaphor I often use is many of our clients, they come and their trauma containers are absolutely full. What that means is that every little bump by life is going to cause stuff to spill out everywhere. If we can do something to start to lower that a little bit, all of a sudden we have a little bit of this. And you know what this is? This is resilience, right? This Mm. is the resilience that comes from having done some work. So yes, maybe with flash, we're not going to transform, you know, the core of your attachment wounding, but I don't care. If right now, I don't care. We just need to start by starting somewhere. Get your feet under you a little better. Give you some resources for survival. And then send you back out into the world with a nervous system that's done some healing. And then come back in and we do more healing. And then you do this on your own when stuff pops up between sessions. When when it's clear that you can do this work when you can do this work safely. Because if you can't do, you, this comes out of the recognition that when we're triggered, we're gonna try to solve that problem. And we're probably mm. gonna try to solve it using an ineffective cultural strategy, mm. right? We're gonna ruminate or we're gonna numb, right? Or we're gonna um, get all angry and, and damage relationships or we're gonna- you know, Oh we're gonna... gosh, I do all of those really successfully. So, uh. <laughs> so, but if a client can actually resolve what just triggered them, that's better than a resource. That may be the beginning of self-efficacy. That may be the beginning of you actually getting some control over your own life, which is important. So I'm I'm wondering, and I don't I don't want to assume, but I'm wondering if when you think about providing people with the four blinks, if you're considering it almost like a an empowerment. It's an empowerment, but think about the type of empowerment that it is, right? Because what it is, is I'm connecting you with something your nervous system already knows. Mm. So it's an empowerment that's offsetting disempowerment. It's an empowerment Mm. that's offsetting the things cultures have taken from you, right? right? Because culture should be showing us how we heal, right? Rather than by showing us ways that we right? It's a trap, right? It doesn't work. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to connect people, not with me, 
not with four blinks, but with this healing pathway that is already inside you Mm. so that you can see how you heal. And when you see how you heal, you can show others how they heal because this pathway is, is broad. It's redundant. Again, you can do flash approaches in a remarkably lousy way, and it's still likely to be productive. It may not fully resolve the memory, but it's still likely to make a nine memory a two or three. I love that. Pretty consistently. And what's wrong with that? That's better than rumination or numbing or throwing stuff or, right? Definitely. Good. Definitely. Thomas, what else would you like our communities who are, um, you know, just centering healing for clients to know about the far blinks, about your services, and anything yeah. that we can provide for them? Right. I guess I guess I would ask, uh, here's what, here are the questions I want to ask. Um, are you seeing clients heal in a transformational way? If you are, do that. Keep doing that. Right. Whatever you do, I don't it does. It, I promise it doesn't matter to me if you're doing other versions of flash. Well, and you're seeing people heal do that. My goodness, the world needs you to do that. But if you're not doing transformational trauma therapies, that's our job. Right. Mm-hmm. Nobody, there's no other profession in the world who is responsible for going on this journey with clients. That's our job. It just simply mm-hmm. is. So if you don't know how to do that. That's a problem. So not knowing how to treat the most common presenting issue in community mental health contexts or in any mental health context is a problem. And I think um, our clients need accompaniment, right? They need people to sit with them in pain. They need to give them support. They need to give them encouragement. But as a transformational trauma therapist, you may be able to have your feet in both worlds, You may be able to have, you may be able to know how the underworld works and you may be able to know how this world works. Mm. So people need more than company in the underworld. They need to let out one piece at a time. And we're not the one leading them. Their nervous system is. We're just showing them how to connect with it. And one piece at a time, they're making their way out into sunshine. So I guess I would say, if you're doing that, keep doing it. If there are places where you struggle in EMDR, IFS, or somatic experiencing, Flash may be able to come in as an adjunctive tool that may be very, very helpful. But if you aren't seeing people heal all day, every day, um, Flash can be a way that you can start to do that. And doing Flash is not a bad way to spend a day. You're doing pleasant things with people all day long. And you're seeing them astonish themselves, right? And and what I love about it is none of this is about me, right? Mm-hmm. That's, none of this is about me. There are people out there who talk about transformational, you know, trauma therapists with big Rod Stewart hair that are making it in large <laughs> part about them. And I, I have no interest in that. This isn't about <laughs> me. This is about you. This is about your nervous system. Mm-hmm. So... Um, so get in touch with that, right? Get in touch with that. And when you are somebody who can do flash, right? Get in touch with this pathway using flash and see yourself heal. It's like a mindful resource that you just had a deep personal experience with. It's so much easier. You can't not teach people that once you've had the experience with it personally. Right. You can't you can't not share it. <laughs> so, Thomas, I don't like I don't want to. Like blow up your spot, but I, yeah. I feel like uh, it's OK for me to say you have responded to multiple calls from me in the last two weeks based on <laughs> what's happening in the world. And you're just like, I'll be there. What time? Right. And so I just wanted to thank you for always. Yeah having that healing present because I think it's not enough to say like, Hey, this isn't about me. It's about how you show up in this space. Right. First. I mean, you, you've trained 600 people in oh, mm-hmm. 10 days. Probably. Yeah. And probably more 
not um, counting Rotems, right? Right, right. And not and not counting the people that are going to um you know see the video. So that's that's I mean, there's th this information is out there. Mm -hmm. If you're not finding it, you're not looking. Yeah. Right? This information is out there. So um and again, in the very first training, in the very first training I did, I've said, I'm going to work with you almost endlessly until you get this, yeah. right? And I've been able to do that. And has that, that has, I view this as kind of, for me, it's almost like an unsustainable amount of energy mm. that I'm putting into flash. So I'm hoping something's going to come along and take some of the, take it and run with it. Right. So that I can ask them, how can I support you? <laughs> you know, so in every training, I said, I don't know which of you is going to develop the <laughs> transformational trauma therapy that is going to change how mental health services are delivered in the 21st century. But one of you is, <laughs> you know, I'm just putting that seed out there. One of you, one of you is going to do it. And um, and yes, it was a busy, it was a busy, unsustainable week. I couldn't keep up with that level of, yeah. because it was also an in-person EMDR training in a city two hours away. So it was yeah. just, you know, it was an unsustainable amount of stuff, but I was more than happy to do it. And, um, and I'll be happy to do it again, you know, if, if needed and, and if asked, but this isn't, a, this isn't about me. Do you know what I mean? This isn't my, this isn't even my, I'm just pointing to what you already have. Well, for what it's worth, what I'll say is that the four blinks definitely um, got me through a very tough time. And I so appreciate that. And I appreciate like all of the people in our communities who have benefited from this and who are always just, their hearts are so big. So they're just yeah. like, when do you want me to flash you? And I'm just like, right. oh. <laughs> Good. So <laughs> that is that is one thing I'd like to really highlight is that um is we have we have an amazing community. I mean, we have we have and we're fortunate, you know, in that in that regard. We have um and I think part of it is that people who are drawn to transformational trauma therapies, I'm not going to say that they're just the coolest subgroup of people among therapists, but I'm going to kind of imply that they tend <laughs> to be pretty, pretty cool, pretty reflective. Do you know what I mean? And people who are really, really interested in helping people um, rescue the self from the past, you know, they're really, really, um, um, we're all, we're all in our own ways. I think we're all kind of, you know, um, ambassadors for, for, what, for what we do. Um, and and this, I mean, our community is full, absolutely full of lovely, lovely people. And I'd love to do trauma therapy with any of them, <laughs> right? Aww. Including have somebody flash me the next crisis I have. So, oh my goodness, Thomas, I just want to share my intense gratitude for all of your service to the community. Mm -hmm. um, what I've seen you do in the last 10 days has not changed what I think about you as a human being, because I always thought you were a rock star. <laughs> um, but you're just so generous. So I would love to point to the places where people can um, engage with you, can get trainings from you, can get consultation from you. Would you like to share those? Because we would love to point Sure. Um, everything flash. Um, so let me talk about just the projects that I have, right? Yeah. So the projects that I have, um, many of which are, are EMDR third weekend. So EMDR third weekend is a place where it's, it's a lot of the things that I'd like to teach you if I had a third weekend to teach you. Mm -hmm. So EMDR third weekend.com you need to sign up for it. It's just a little, you know, it's just a wall to try to keep out people who aren't therapists. But everything there is free. Flash is there. EMDR podcast is there. Um, lots of uh, lots of uh, other stuff is there is there as well. The Go With That blog is there. Um, so a really good place to connect would be EMDR Third Weekend. Um, everything central about flash is on the four blinks website so fourblinks.com um, website 
Um, on the Four Blinks website, you'll see the new self-administered flash that, um, that I have a website just for that. That's resolvememories.com. Um, and um, there's, 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 a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of projects out there. So I'm pretty easy. I'm pretty easy to find. If you Google Thomas Zimmerman EMDR, it's gonna, it's, you'll, you'll be able to connect with me. I'm well. so excited about that. And also, I hope that you will revisit us as those things come up, because we want to be able to amplify your voice yeah. as you are just providing these immensely important mm -hmm. um, and tools. consultation consultation. It, it's um, my site is emdrtom.com. And I jokingly say that sounds a lot like a vanity license plate. And I'm the last <laughs> person to have a vanity license plate. <laughs> Although if I did, it may might as well be EMDR Tom, but, but um, emdrtom.com is where you can get um, consultation with me and my consultation. I'm very happy that it's, among the most affordable you're going to find for an approved consultant. So um, I do quite a bit of groups and they're, they're simply affordable. So um, even my individual rate is about half what my hourly rate is as a therapist. So again, I'm, wow. I've gone out of my way to try to make sure that, um, that I'm accessible. Right. So um, I'm uh I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. And, yeah. and and I enjoy consultation. I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. I think that that's amazing. And also, please know that we send a ton of consultees your way. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of specialize in that perinatal sphere and the BIPOC sphere. So when my BIPOC clients are just like, what about this? I was just like, please don't come see me. Just mm -hmm. go see Tom. Um, <laughs> Tom has well, a specialty you. in that. I trust Tom. Like, um, yeah, so Thomas, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. Thank you. Thank you thank for the you. last 10 days. It has been a brutal yeah. last 10 well, days. Well, thank you. Thank you for um, your part in making it um, go smoothly and keep it. It's, it's, the, it's the behind the scenes people that do all the hard work. <laughs> so thank yeah. you for your, thank you for your, uh, your work and, and everything you do as well. Oh, we love it. Uh, we appreciate okay. you. And um, I'm going to be pointing people to all of the resources that you have uh, shared with us in this conversation. So we right, hope to you. have you back. Okay. Thank you. You take care.